Okay, let's uh, invite our next group. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Farelin, and together with Eric and David, we're going to present our project, for which we had a very unique and original idea of looking at Wikipedia data. Uh, how will we depress the ability of Swedish Wikipedia? So don't get bored uh, if you already listened to Wikipedia already. Um, um, so just to get started, to give some facts, um, we looked at Wikipedia in Swedish language, and surprisingly, maybe, uh, Swedish Wikipedia is the fourth largest uh, edition in all of like Wikipedia languages, and it contains uh, around 2,600 articles. And I was informed that many of them are generated by bots, so they're not like humans who wrote them, but bots who generate the articles. But that resulted in like many different pages. And uh, let's say that you're a Swedish uh, user and you want to search some keyword and read some article in the Swedish Wikipedia. Uh, there are many uh, articles that contain similar titles. So you would like to have, um, I don't know, some sort of uh, smart way of searching to get like the best, most relevant uh, article for your query. And um, that's our problem definition. You want to uh, like uh, give some such mechanism so that a user can find the most relevant article for their need. And we use page rank to, to find the relevance uh, to the, the most important articles. So Eric, I think we'll discuss the algorithm, but before that, there's some uh, input processing that we need to do on the data. Um, which I think David will talk, but before we use this uh, cute, cute photo of what a page rank would do. Uh, <laughs> we get to that later. Uh, but yeah, first we do some input parts. Yeah, okay. So uh, in the original implementation of page rank, they did it on the web. And um, when you do it on the web, you have to crawl the web to see where, where links go. But uh, for Wikipedia, it's quite convenient because there's a SQL file of uh, where the links go and uh, so on. So let's look at uh, this SQL file. So first we have uh, one, day, uh, one table, which is pages.sql. So here we have page IDs, which are a globally unique ID for each page. And there's also a page title, which is what the, what the subject of the of the article is. And then there's also this uh, entity is redirect. So if it's a redirect, then if you go there, you will get redirected and we'll get into where later on. And there's also this thing called namespace. And uh, that's essentially kind of the category of the article or rather the, the, the entry. So articles have namespace zero, and then there's other stuff like users and user talks and discussions about articles and so on. But for most interesting things, the namespace is zero. Right. Uh, so that's not. Uh... Right. So then we have this thing called page links. So that's our links. Uh, so we have, uh, where do we go from? So that's a, it's a GUI, uh, no, it's a globally unique identifier. And then we have the title which we, uh, which we link to. And then we have the link spaces where the links come from and go to. And then we also have this redirects, uh, which says, uh, like if you are a redirect, you have to redirect somewhere. So for example here, for uh, Article 6, which was April 30th, it's going to redirect to 30 April. Uh, right. So what do we want out of all of this? So first off, we need the page links, but we don't want them in the format they are in. We want uh, uh, integer of the article mapping to a list of the integers which it maps to. And uh, we need this for page rank because that's that's one of the inputs for page ranks. And uh, we also want to collapse all of the redirects so the links can both have a source which is redirect or a destination which is redirected. So we want to remove that. And uh, um, so, sorry, so you make it undirected, if I understand you correctly? Uh, no, so we, 
So imagine I link to a redirect page, uh, okay. but then I follow the redirect. Uh, I'm going yes. to end up in some okay. other page. Okay. So I want the the page rank to not take into account the redirection and like yeah, you go to the destination directly. Uh, see, we also want a uh, name to page ID. So we need this for search. So we can uh, search for the, let's say, uh, Gustav or something. And we can find like which entities contain Gustav and which page IDs are, do they correspond to? So for example, uh, see. Uh, and we also want to go from page ID to uh, namespace and title. And that's so we, if we get the search result, which is an uh, integer, then we want it to be able to, we want to be able to go back to uh, the URL which it corresponds to. Right. So there's some problems. And it's a bit old because in the SQL file, it's supposed to be encoded in UTF 8, which is a string format. Uh, but uh, you can't parse all the, the entries in UTF-8. Instead, uh, you can look at the entries which you can't parse, and uh, uh, they contain the byte uh, E4, which for UTF-8 corresponds to, like, this is a special character. It's going to be quite long, so uh, it's going to be three bytes, but then it holds as a magic number, so you can check that uh, it will conform to actually specifying those three bytes in the in a correct way, and it doesn't, and that's because it's not UTF-8. It's actually a ISO 8859 encoding. So this E4 corresponds to the A, which a human can quite easily see. At least it's in the Swedish because the, the word it's which is surrounding the character is obviously going to contain this A character instead. Uh, so that's a bit annoying, uh, but uh, we solved this plus by first we try to uh, decode it as this ISO uh, yeah, this ISO standard, and then if if we can reinterpret it as UTF-8, then we do that, and if it doesn't crash, then things are good. Uh, so also another odd thing is that redirects can redirect to redirect the pages, which is kind of a dubious uh, structure, but uh, uh, it's present, so we, we actually need to not just resolve things in one step, but multiple steps until convergence. Uh, and convergence is always found because there's no cycles in the redirects, so that's at least nice. Uh, see, yeah, also page links has this kind of odd, uh, ex you can also express page links out of the language you're in, so you can have a page link to let's say the English Wikipedia, uh, which we will not take into account because we didn't parse the English Wikipedia. And like in the end, you would probably need to do this for all Wikipedias because it kind of links to each other. Right. So, Eric? Uh, not, not over the page rank algorithm. Yeah. I thought they did link to each other, the languages. It's on the left hand side to get like which languages it's available. Yeah, but, but this is like the orbit. So you can yeah. Yeah, so. Right. So the idea is to go from a naive implementation in NumPy and to a Spark implementation. Uh, but first, the definition of what page rank is. Uh, let's see if I can scroll. So the, as the name suggests, uh, you, you get a rank per page. Um, and this rank reflects the chance for a random surfer that just randomly clicks links on Wikipedia to end up on that page. So in math, it looks something like this. So the probability of being at a page that links to you divided by the probability of going to you from that page. So one over the total number of links. Um, 
but one typically also adds in the model that you don't just randomly pick one of the links at the page. You can also, as with some probability, uh, just pick any other page. It doesn't have to have a link to it. And then you get a form like this instead. So with a probability, you do as before, but uh, otherwise you pick one at random. So n is the total number of uh, pages. And so then the idea is that we first do this in NumPy with a simple toy example with only five uh, pages. Uh, and you can do this first, this sum is only over the sum over all pages that links to this sum. It's only over the uh, pages that link to uh, the one you want. And you can get that sum through a, a sparse matrix. So take the sparse matrix times the page rank gives you that exact sum. Uh, but you don't get the scale factor in the sum so that you need to scale all the columns of this matrix, this binary matrix, uh, to normalize each column. And then you get the matrix B. And then to get this dampening factor, as they call it, this that you randomly pick any other, uh, you can just scale this uh, matrix B by this dampening terms. And then the entire page rank algorithm is iterative. So you start with a guess for the page rank and you start like uh, completely random. All pages are as important. And then you just uh, uh, do a matrix vector multiplication several times. And in the end it converges and you have your page rank as X. Uh, but the problem with this, or there's at least two problems, that this M matrix I printed here is dense. So if you have a lot of pages, this matrix is really big. Um, and also this um, initial implementation is not parallel. So we want to just scale it up. So we first get away from a dense matrix vector multiplication. Uh, the, it's not uh, super important, but the idea, the important part is that we can go from a dense matrix vector multiplication to a sparse matrix vector multiplication in the first step, and then this is scaled by this part to get the dampening uh, step. But then we only need this binary uh, uh, matrix, it's just ones and zeros, which is much easier to store. Uh, so, so we store this similar to what Dava talked about. So for each column, we just have a list of integers where there was a one. And then we can do this sparse matrix multiplication as just scaling, um, like by definition, it looks like this. Uh, so that's good. We've removed a lot of redundant data, and then we just need to parallelize it as well. And then the idea is that we can do this sparse matrix vector multiplication as a map and reduce, and then we can do that uh, with Spark. And then this dampening part is just an additional map. It looks something like this. This is the sparse matrix multiplication, and then you add the dampening terms. So now we want to take this to uh, Spark and do it on Wikipedia. So we load the data that David created, and then we have the Spark indentation here. So we have two RDDs that are the main ones. One is the rankings or the page ranks, which is just an array of the page ID and the a current page rank. So we really start from random or uniform and the sparse uh, uh, representation of the matrix, which is just the page ID and the array of outgoing links. And then we have the full implementation here. So we start with a join. So we get all the inf information we need. So we get the uh, page ID, the page rank, and the list of outgoing links. With that information, we can do the sparse matrix vector multiplication as a flat map and reduce. 
And then once we have that, we do the damping for the just the map. And that's all there is to it. But it takes a bit longer on this. Uh, and actually, if you have so if you only if you don't only use the articles, but also like discussions and things on uh, Swedish Wikipedia, the like number of pages is almost four million. So it's uh, it's quite large. And then we just uh, run this once to get the sorting of the pages and store it, so we can uh, reuse it in the, when we query. Well, uh, you, you collect. So when you get the dot collect, it'll be. Wait, wait, wait. It's a four million large uh, dot. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we do the page rank. We get the rank for each page, and then let's go back to our original problem that we we're trying to solve, which is uh, you want to search for query, and I think the first example. Um, that we have is let's see. Okay, Let, let's say that we want to search for um, I don't know some keyword laser, and uh, we're not super sure like what exactly what laser we're looking for. Uh, so what we do here is that we go through all the pages and find all the pages that contain um, the the phrase laser, and it could be the beginning, in the end, or the middle, anywhere in the title. And, uh, and in this case of laser, there are 354 matching articles. And to tell which one is most relevant, we look at the ranks of the pages. And uh, in this case, the top five search results are the following, which were the first one I think is uh, laser treatment. And that seems to be like the most uh, important in, in the Swedish Wikipedia, uh, followed by uh, the other ones, like second one, I think is laser uh, leveling device. If you want to level like a, I don't know, a table or something, um, and so on, like a bunch of others. And I think, uh, yeah, David mentioned the word, uh, the name Gustav. So yeah, let's say that you just input Gustav uh, and you want to get like the relevant articles. And it turns out that the first one is Gustav Vasa, which I think was the OG Gustav. <laughs> <laughs> The most important Gustav in Sweden, but the father uh, figure, I guess, of Sweden, uh, followed by some other Gustavs. And I think as you go down, they become less and less important. And uh, one could also be interested to, to like just look at the uh, page rank results, like in general, uh, not conditioning on any keyword. And it turns out that uh, the top 10 rank pages out of these 10, the first line are uh, related to uh, like species and taxonomy of species or plants or animals, stuff like that. And it could be that uh, because of the reason that um, many of the pages were generated by bots and the bots, I don't know, they, I don't know why, but they generated like articles related to species and animal kingdom and stuff like that. And maybe the funny thing here is that uh, number 10 is a page for sources needed. So that's the tenth most important page in Swedish Wikipedia. Sources needed. So and that's not bots, right? That's you know, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but then the the first line, um, they're like species, kingdom, uh, yeah, plants, family, and yeah, stuff like that. Maybe some Linnaean foundation is going down. That's <laughs> Yeah, maybe I don't know. They're going crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Swedish Wikipedia has like uh, because, like you said, the bots uh, they have so many translated pages. Uh, like I think like eighty percent of all Swedish pages are actually translated automatically by bots from the uh, English Wikipedia. Okay, that's interesting. And they put focus on like species or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that, that's a good question, but I just know that like. The second largest Wikipedia is actually Swedish because of these bots. And also, bots can transcend into a linear hierarchy of taxonomy. So it's very easy, right? Yeah. I'm just guessing. So, uh, let's thank them. Yeah, so let's thank them. Are there any questions before we wait for the chat? Those names is four. That's a good question. You can check, right? 
no, uh, it's, it's not there. It's uh, it's in the uh, it's it's in a, a file I did in private parts, but like it's a mandatory or case one. Like, it's not much broader because it's only like namespaces and name on namespaces, but uh, it's also a lot of out there. So, um, there's probably not an article because source is needed. Mm -hmm. It's not like a, it's not an article page that you can. I think namespace or should be a media talk page about the article. I think that's good for me. Okay, uh, let's break. <laughs>